to episode 23 of the Elo and Stitch podcast. I am your host, Kristen, and I am here to talk to you about, what else? Knitting. I will also be talking about knitting pattern design uh, and other goings on in the fiber arts community. And as usual, there's a good chance I'll mention Diego Luna somewhere along the way for no real reason. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining me today. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons who help keep the podcast up and running. And a special welcome to any new viewers who are checking out the podcast for the first time. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I am a knitting pattern designer and instructor. I am also the mom to two mischievous little boys and the wife to a very tall man from Peru. We live in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. And when I'm not knitting, I'm usually enjoying yoga, vegetable gardening, drinking wine, Orioles baseball, usually. Uh, but it is mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. Well, <laughs> we have made it to July somehow. Um, half the year is gone, even though we didn't use much of it. Uh, I hope you are still staying safe, staying home as much as possible, wearing a mask when you are going out. Um, avoiding large groups of people, and uh, when you are going out, pursuing mostly outdoor activities. That's basically what we're doing around here. Fourth of July was quite a bust. Um, I did have my dad and sister over for a barbecue, and uh, actually we had them over for a sleepover because <laughs> Friday they came over uh, to watch Hamilton. And then Saturday, we had a barbecue for the 4th of July. Uh, the kids were very disappointed about fireworks being canceled. There were no formal fireworks shows around here. Um, I could hear fireworks, so definitely somebody was setting them off, but I couldn't unfortunately see any of them. So that was a real bummer. And I think this was the first year in probably since the kids were born, that it actually didn't rain on the 4th of July. It would have been a really good year to go to the fireworks, and uh, there weren't any. We also usually go to a little community parade on the 4th of July, and uh, the kids enjoy that because the people on the floats, which are mostly just cars and trucks, uh, will throw candy <laughs> into the crowd. Um, so they missed out on that as well. Um, but here we are into July. Um, still not doing anything. Occasionally I will go to my dad or my sister's house, so they will come here. That's about it. We had one, a socially distant evening at a neighbor's house uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and the kids got to play in their pool, which of course they enjoyed. And I got to see some adults that I'm not related to which I enjoyed, um, but that has been about it. Um, this is, summer is, it's usually not my favorite anyway. I am a fall person. Um, I do enjoy swimming and going to the beach and those things, but in general, I find, find summer too hot. Um, and, I mean, I don't hate summer, but it's not my favorite season. And this one is uh, quite, quite depressing, just kind of sitting around the house. Uh, we did get an inflatable pool for the boys. Uh, our community pools are open, um, but I do not feel comfortable taking them there. Um, you know, you can't really wear a mask in the pool. Uh, the pool itself, though, is not my big concern. It's, it's really the, the public restrooms. Um, also, the pools took away all the chairs, so you had to bring your own chairs, which I don't have, or you can sit on the concrete. Um, and yeah, the public bathroom situation there, um, I'm not really comfortable with. So we got a little inflatable pool that's, you know, a foot and a half deep tops, but the boys are happy with it. They have spent most of their days in there since we set it up. So at least they have that. Um, we do still have our, our trip to the beach planned uh, at the very, very end of this month. 
Um, you know, we've rented it. We always rent a house with my dad and sister. I don't know what the situation is like. Uh, we live in the Outer Banks in North Carolina. Um, we did rent a house with a, a pool, a real pool, not a pool that's a foot and a half deep. Um, so we'll at least have that. I believe the beaches are open. Certainly we will try to keep separate from other families and groups there. Uh, I don't know what the restaurant situation is. Hopefully some, some places are available for takeout because if I'm cooking dinner every night there, well, that's, that's just the same as being at home. <laughs> only, only we can look at the beach. Um, so hopefully that uh, will still be enjoyable. I know we won't be able to do some of the things that we usually do. We usually take the kids to the uh, aquarium down there in uh, Manio. It's a very nice aquarium, but it is um, generally very crowded. It is indoors. Um, I think I could probably get JJ to wear a mask, wear a mask, but Ollie, I doubt it. So I um, don't think we'll be doing that. And I'm not sure about some of our other activities. We'll just have to play it by ear. But I hope we will still have a at least a little bit of a break and get to the beach. Um, it's a little bittersweet though, because it's literally the only thing we have to look forward to because absolutely everything else for the year has been canceled. Um, Rhinebeck has been canceled. And obviously all of the events that go with Rhinebeck have been canceled. Um, I have a big birthday this year that will remain nameless and uh, seems like uh, a party or other kind of big celebration is going to be out of the question. Um, certainly we won't be traveling anywhere that requires us to go on a plane or other uh, public transport. Um, we have no idea what's going on with school. I, at least at this stage, would not feel very comfortable sending the boys back to school. Um, And we'll just have to see what happens as we get closer to what would be the start of the school year. Most important thing is, of course, that keeping keeping our family safe and healthy. Uh, none of us have any. Well, I don't want to say that uh, we don't have any of the common pre-existing conditions um, that seem to. Um, make the coronavirus more dangerous. So, you know, we don't have diabetes, heart disease, any of those things. Um, but Ollie's genetic disorder is kind of a guessing game. Like you never know when something is going to impact him differently. So certainly that's very important for us. Um, so sometimes I think maybe we're being overly cautious, but that is the most important thing uh, is keeping us all safe, but it is, it is certainly uh, wearing on all of us, I think. <sighs> but that's enough sort of aimless chatter, which <laughs> in every episode seems to be getting more, more depressing. <laughs> um, let's start talking about some knitting. All right, I do have a pattern drop for you in this episode. This is actually a pattern that I published last month. This is the Painted on the Sky sleeveless top, which I worked on in collaboration with Fiber for the People yarn. I'm going to try to do one of those, uh, what's it called? Card thingies. <laughs> That's going to link over to her website or her YouTube channel, something like that. I'll give it my best shot. Uh, and I'll also cut away here and pop in a few pictures of the design. So this is a fingering weight project that combines with mohair to create that uh, sheer yoke. Um, it is mostly worked in stockinette. The big standout feature is the, the pleat, and that can actually be worn in the front or the back. Uh, I didn't intentionally design it that way, but it's nice when things work out. Um, so you can see in the photos I have worn the pleat in the front. And then there's a sheer yoke, which is created by just knitting with that lace weight mohair. 
You could also substitute um, brush three alpaca. That's another popular um, version of that, that kind of fuzzy lace weight yarn. Um, and then the front has the scoop neck and the back it has a v-neck. Um, so that's, you know, that's why it's nice and reversible. You can have the v-neck in the front. And then the main body is worked with the fingering weight and the mohair held together. Uh, but you could actually just work the body and the fingering weight if you wanted to, and that would actually also save you a little bit of yarn. But working with the, both yarns held together gives you a little bit of variation uh, in the color, and it gives the whole thing a nice, fuzzy, cozy feel, um, which maybe is not what you're looking for in the summer, but one, air conditioning, and two, summer won't last forever. And this is a nice piece for when it starts to get cool in the fall, um, but you're not quite ready for those big cozy sweaters yet. So again, this is called Painted on the Sky. It is now available in my Ravelry shop. It is also available at uh, Love Knitting, uh, which I believe is just loveknitting.com. It's part of the Love Crafts group. Um, and I just happened to notice on Instagram that Taylor is currently running a special where you can order a sweater quantity for your top and save 15%. So I am going to link to her shop uh, down below and in the show notes so that you can hop over there and do that. The coupon code is painted on the sky, all caps. So that is the pattern drop for you that I have this month. News and notes. Um, there are two things I want to talk about. One good and one less good. Um, the first is that right now I am hosting a sweater along. Uh, this is something that I do after the run of my Sweater Siren e-course. Um, it's open to the Sweater Siren students as well as knitters in general. And to participate, you just pick one of my sweater patterns and join us. Um, you can participate in my Ravelry group and you can also just participate on Instagram if that is more your speed. Um, so I will include links to all the details and, and threads and things uh, in the show notes so that you can find that information. Um, but if you like to get um, some support and encouragement as you knit your sweaters in preparation for the fall, which I know seems far away, but if we wait until the fall to start knitting our sweaters, then our sweaters aren't actually done when we are ready to wear them. So I encourage you to start your sweater knitting in the summer and that way, by the time the weather, weather cools off, you're not suddenly thinking about sweaters. You already have your sweater, at least one new one done for the season. Uh, so the official kickoff date for the sweater along was July 6th. It runs through September 14th, which is 10 full weeks of sweater knitting. Um, we have some challenges along the way. I've already posted the first challenge. Uh, so you can take a look in the Ravelry group or on Instagram to find more details about that. So there is one big grand prize that everybody who participates will be um, and finishes a sweater during the sweater long will be entered to win. Um, but the challenges are sort of mini goals along the way and uh, another chance to win some, some cute prizes. So I hope you will check that out. As I said, this is the best time to start your sweater knitting. I have uh, lots of sweater patterns in my pattern library. Um, I also have, and we'll include in the show notes, a chart that breaks down all the sweater patterns by uh, yarn weight, sizes that are available, construction, you know, bottom up, top down, what the different yoke styles are and, and all of that. So if you're not sure where to start, that is a good option. Um, so if you are a sweater knitter, I hope you will join us. Be sure to check out all of those links in the show notes. So that was the good, sweater knitting good. Um, Ravelry is a mess right now. Um, a couple weeks ago, they introduced a site redesign, which um, is not a problem for me. Any kind of change like that, you know, is jarring at first, uh, takes some getting used to, but you know, I've been using it and it doesn't impact me in any negative way. However, uh, there are Quite a number of people who have experienced um, some negative side effects from using the site. So eye strain, uh, migraines, um, 
I don't know if there is a confirmation, but I, you know, have heard some rumors that people had um, seizures triggered by the new site. This is not something I'm an expert in, so I cannot, you know, comment on the probable veracity of that. Um, but I am in the camp that when people believe, when people say things are a problem, you have to believe them. Um, so there have been apparently quite a few people um, negatively impacted by the new site redesign. People have been speaking up um, and some minor changes have been made, but overall it seems that Ravelry has not been as responsive as they need to be to these issues. They have um, given you the option to revert to the original site. Um, my understanding is that having to navigate through the new site in order to revert to the old site is still very difficult for uh, some of the people that are having trouble. Um, and it doesn't address sort of the underlying issue that Ravelry introduced this major change and um, apparently did not take into account issues of accessibility. Um, again, that is not my area of expertise, so I cannot speak to what is involved in that, um, but Ravelry is the primary community for people working in fiber arts. Um, it has I don't remember the last count, something over 8 million members, uh, knitters, crocheters, spinners, weavers. Um, it is where most independent designers sell their patterns. Um, it is a database of available patterns. It is very valuable in helping people to find patterns, pair patterns with yarn, um, things like that. And there's basically no viable competitor at this point to Ravelry. Um, so having this major hub of our community um, that is not responding to issues of accessibility, um, or in some cases, you know, perhaps disability, is very concerning. Um, it's very difficult to understand because in the past Ravelry has um, has been very community oriented, has been very responsive to concerns of the community. We know last year around this time was when um, Ravelry banned um, uh, language supporting Donald Trump from the forums that are on Ravelry. Um, in order to make it a safe space for everybody. Um, so it's very difficult to understand what the situation is here. It's not only are they not addressing the concerns um, adequately, they're also not really responding. You know, they're not saying, okay, we understand we're working on it or anything like that. Um, or at least they're not responding adequately. So. Uh, as I said, though, unfortunately, there's no real um, viable alternative to Ravelry, especially for pattern designers. Um, so uh, you will find my patterns also on, as I, as I mentioned in another segment, on Love Knitting. Um, it is an alternative. It is years and years away from what is provided by Ravelry. Um, so for example, coupon codes, they're, they're not available on Love Knitting. Uh, automatic updates to customers for um, uh, errata or revised patterns, also not there. Um, so it is an alternative if Ravelry is not working for you, but it's not a great one. Uh, I know some designers are looking into selling their patterns on their own websites. Um, Unfortunately, that is going to work best for major, really popular designers who have a, um, a large and sort of loyal uh, group of, of fans and customers. They will follow them to their website. Um, for smaller time designers, 
who, you know, a lot of their pattern sales just come from people who happen to find the patterns on Ravelry that match their search, you know, that those things are not going to take you to their website. You know, that's not, that's not how it works. So, um, it is upsetting. I don't know what the answer is. Um, moving forward, I hesitate at this point to start um, trying to sell patterns directly through my own website. I do have a website. Um, it is uh, sort of a gargantuan task to start doing that. Um, and ultimately, I don't know that it will really be, be worth all the effort. So. Um, again, if Ravelry is giving you trouble these days and you are looking for my patterns, you can find them on Love, Love Knitting. Um, I know it's not the same as Ravelry, but it is something of an alternative. And uh, in terms of sort of the community uh, on Ravelry, the forums and the message boards and things, um, there are no great alternatives, but I think you'll find a pretty active fiber arts community on Instagram if that's something that interests you. So that's what I got for some news and notes in this episode. All right, on and off the needles. <laughs> I don't think you'll be surprised to hear that I don't have anything off the needles. Um, but I do have some new things on the needles, <laughs> as is usually the case. Uh, so um, as I mentioned, this, this past weekend, my dad and sister came over to watch Hamilton on Disney+. Plus. Um, obviously we have kids, so we have to have Disney Plus. Um, that worked out in our favor this time. So, uh, we all got together and I wanted something really simple to work on during Hamilton that I really didn't have to pay attention to. Um, so just some plain stockinette knitting. Uh, so I decided to cast on the non-Euclidean socks by Sarah Jordan. Uh, as you can see, these socks are um, mostly plain stockinette with a very intriguing heel. So they're knit from the cuff down, which is not my usual uh, preferred sock knitting method, but um, I know Sarah, she's a very nice person. So I figured I, just for her, I would go ahead and knit a pair of cuff down socks. Um, and since they're knit from the cuff down, that means that the star is just a plain stockinette leg and it was going to be a really good project to work on during Hamilton. So here is what I have so far. I am using White Birch Fiber Arts uh, yarn. She is famous for her self-striping colorways and this one is called Nothing Says Screw You Like a Rainbow. So I haven't, uh, you know, maybe about half the leg done, which isn't too bad. Again, this is just Plain stockinette. Did I just say sockinette? Well, plain stockinette. Um, very, you know, transportable, uh, easy to pick up and knit a few rounds without worrying about, you know, where you left off for the pattern or anything like that. So I'm really torn on this. I love this yarn. So I can't decide if I should make extra long legs or if I should be a good mom and make normal socks so that I have enough left over for socks for JJ, who also wants um, rainbow socks. I really can't decide. I'm not sure that I could actually, it's really getting bigger. Um, so I'm not sure if I could get full, you know, calf length socks for both of us, but I could definitely do at least calf length socks for me and a pair of shorty socks for him. So we'll see. Um, but they're looking so cute so far. I'm really trying to boost my sock drawer this summer, um, but in order to do that, I really need to knit just kind of plain, plain or very easy to memorize sock, sock patterns. Otherwise it just won't happen. I don't have the patience to sit there with a pattern or a chart or anything. Um, so I am really excited to see how the heel works on these. It looks very intriguing. Um, that kind of thing, you know, where it's plain, 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 plain. Really interesting heel, plain, 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 plain. That I can handle for a sock pattern. Um, so, got a new pair of socks on the needles and uh, hopefully maybe by the next time I podcast, I might even have one done, we shall see. So I started that <laughs> and then 
I swear there's something else. Um, I've really been kind of obsessing over the idea of having more sort of summer knits. The problem with this is that I really don't enjoy knitting with cotton or linen. Um, and maybe in some places you can wear wool in the summer, but not in Maryland. Um, it's like every morning my husband gets up and, you know, says, Alexa weather to find out the weather report. And every day it's the same, so I don't know why he does this. Hazy, hot, and humid, high around 90, chance of afternoon thunderstorms. That's pretty much going to be the forecast every day, at least through the middle of August. We get a couple of one-offs here and there. Um, so today it was a little cloudier this morning than expected, so it hasn't gotten quite as hot. It's only 84 instead of 89, um, but it is still humid as hell. It's really disgusting. So wool definitely doesn't work here in the summer, unfortunately. Um, so that makes it a little difficult for me if I don't like cotton and linen and I can't wear wool in the summer. What am I going to do? So I, you know, have to make some sacrifices of my hands mostly. Um, and I've had the, I don't know if it's de chain or de chain or de chain could be French. I don't know. Um, top in my queue for quite a while. And I will go ahead and pop a photo in here. So this is a pattern by Layla, I don't know if it's Rob or Robbie, um, that is knit in Quince and Company. Quince and Company Kestrel, <laughs> which is a, um, a, a chained, I guess, linen or ribbon, uh, um, a linen ribbon yarn. Um, and so most of the time I don't use whatever yarn is called for in the pattern because most patterns kind of call for the same thing, almost always a, you know, a plied merino wool or a wool blend or something like that. And it's very easy to make substitutes. But for this one, I thought when you're working with something like linen, which is a little bit temperamental, um, it's probably a good idea to use the actual yarn called for in the pattern. Um, and also Quince and Company yarn is, is very economically priced. So I went ahead and ordered the yarn. I did pick a different color. <laughs> um, and I have started on my, whatever this pattern's called, this chain. Um, so it doesn't look like much. This is the front. Um, and it, you know, the centerpiece is this, um, shale, what's called shale stitch lace uh, that goes right up the front. You can see that it causes a, a bit of a distortion so that right in the middle it pulls upward a little bit. Um, and then the rest is just plain stockinette. Um, it is knit in pieces. I had considered adapting it to work in the round, but again, if you're working with linen, which is very drapey, really need those seams for stability. So I decided not to do that. Um, and so far so good. This uh, linen yarn, perhaps because of the structure, you can see it is this kind of um, flat ribbon, kind of. It's not as hard on the hands as some other linens I have tried. So last year I knit uh, a summer top for I Like Knitting magazine in Loet Euroflax, which was a, a wet spun linen, and that was pretty harsh on my hands. This isn't, uh, it's still not great. I mean, I don't love knitting with it. It's certainly not as soft as, you know, Superwash Merino or anything, but it's not terrible. So you can see I've, um, the size that I've picked, which is, I believe, the smallest size, um, it doesn't come with a lot of sizes, as I recall, because it's designed to have lots and lots of ease. So um, it's supposed to have four repeats of the shale pattern on the front, and I've already done one. Uh, a lot of people, um, as I was looking through the Ravelry projects, a lot of people modified it to have five repeats. So we'll just see how it goes as I'm knitting. I don't, I don't want it to be super cropped, but um, I'm also pretty short-waisted, so I may not really need to do that. It should probably be plenty long for me uh, following the pattern. So 
<laughs> Wish I'd started this earlier because this is obviously something you want to wear for the summer and at this rate it's you know by the time it's done it's gonna be fall but um, we do have a trip to the beach coming up so maybe I'll make more progress than I think. Uh, the color that I picked is Cove. It's getting a little blown out on the camera. Just sort of a, uh, a gray blue which um, blue is generally a good flattering color for me so that's why I went with that. Um, so so far I am happy with this. This is the second project for my Make 9 2020. I had, as I mentioned in previous episodes, started a Lionheart shawl for my Make 9 and then decided that um, it wasn't going to work for me. So uh, I have moved on from that and I have started a second project for my Make 9 2020. And then the third uh, selfish project that I have on the needles is still my ripple butt shorts. <laughs> um, so let's see there's just strings all over the place so here they are i have started on the increases to make the legs nothing super exciting going on here it's just working a three by three rib and you're gradually increasing um until hopefully it's gonna fit around uh your butt um so nice thing about this is that it's simple, easy to memorize. I don't really have to keep looking at the instructions um, and we'll see how it goes. I'm still a little concerned that this waistband is looking pretty small, but it is supposed to have negative ease as well. So just see how it works out. Um, I haven't made a ton of progress on these, but given that I have three different uh, Selfish project whips on the needles. That is not super surprising. Nothing finished as usual, but that's what's on the needles in this episode. All right, I did want to share a little bit of shopping fun with you in this episode. Uh, I haven't been doing a lot of shopping because um, I'm at home and all the Firebird festivals have been canceled. Um, but I did pick up a really cute pair of earrings that I wanted to show you. Well, I got these in the mail just the other day, and these are by Designs by Yasmin, or Yasmin. I'm not 100% sure how to say that. Uh, and you can see these are nice big hoop earrings. I, hope, I can't tell if this is focusing. There we go. Um, with this really pretty crochet design on it. So these are pretty large. You can see how they would fit me, but I love them. They're really cute. They're done in I, what looks to be crochet cotton. Uh, so they're not gonna fuzz or pill or anything like that. Um, I wanna say these cost about 18 bucks, which is totally reasonable for this um, beautiful, beautiful work of art. And I have been so happy with them. They're just so cute. It's so hard, you know, like I said, in warm weather to incorporate the fiber arts. Um, and I don't crochet at all. <laughs> I can do a chain for a provisional cast on and that's it. Um, so but when you, you have something like this, this is with cotton, first of all, and second, it's just right on your ears. So, you know, it's not in a whirlwind, which would be kind of weird. But even if it were, it's just on your ears, so it's not going to make you, you know, super hot or anything like that. Um, so I just, I really like these, incorporating these little bits of fiber arts, uh, even when the weather is warm, and I just thought these were so adorable. So she uh, is very active on Instagram, and I noticed she had some new um, designs shared there probably about a month ago. And that is when I grabbed these. She has an Etsy shop where you can find all kinds of earrings like this in all kinds of different uh, beautiful colors. If you are into more bright colors, I liked these because I think they'll go with more stuff. Um, but she had done, you know, bright colors and bigger hoops and smaller hoops and different kinds of lace design. She had another kind of lacy crochet design that I really liked. Um, I'm keeping an eye on her shop in case I can snag it another time. She also has some maybe different shapes like triangles and things. So it's just um, a really, really cute way to add some 
some fiber flair to your outfit, even if you are not wearing, you know, a traditional sweater, shawl, or anything like that. So I will link to her shop in the show notes. Um, but again, it's designs by Yasmin or Yasmin, not 100% sure, um, but she's obviously very talented. Um, these are a total bargain and they're absolutely adorable. So definitely check out her Etsy shop. For Adelante in this episode, um, I don't have anything that I'm working on for July. I released three patterns in June and that was, that was quite a lot. Um, and I am, you know, I've got my beach trip coming up and I am working on a deadline design that is due August 1st. So I'm trying to focus on that and, and take things down a notch in July in preparation for everything that's gonna be coming in the fall. So. I don't have anything to show you that's coming up this month, but I do have a couple of things in the works um, that I can show you for the fall. Um, so first, I think I've showed you at least the swatch for this before. This is the bottom hem of a pullover design that I am working for for the fall. Um, so this is, um, you can see it has a rolled hem and then this is a twisted rib worked at kind of a loose gauge. So it's a little bit lacy looking because it is worked at that loose gauge. Uh, so this is a fingering weight yarn worked on a US five. So that's why you're getting that little bit of a lacy effect. Uh, and this is going to be a cabled drop shoulder pullover that's gonna be published in the fall. So I am working with uh, Biche et Bouche, Le Petit Lambswool. This is their green gray color. And a little, I know, I don't have the greatest light today. It's getting a little blown out there. It is sort of a, a green gray, as you might imagine, uh, but it's maybe a little bit darker than it looks here. Um, so the reason I'm working on the larger needle is one, nobody wants to knit a fingering weight sweater on a you know, US2 or anything like that. Um, but also because it's gonna be cabled all over the body of the sweater. Um, which makes a denser fabric, so it's easier to go up to a higher needle size. Um, so we have gotten that started. I am just about at the point now where I am ready to switch from the rib hem to the body of the sweater. Um, I'm gonna work a couple more rounds of that hem, but that's about it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and the, let's see if I still have it here. I don't think I do. I don't have my swatch here. And oh, here it is. So the body of the sweater is this, um, again, light's kind of blowing it out. It's a slip stitch cable, just a, a one over two slip stitch cable, columns of those. Um, hopefully going to be, because it is a, um, a drop shoulder, I want it to be a bit drapey, but since it's cabled again, working on a larger needle, uh, and that should be published in late August, early September is what I'm going for. Um, and if you do decide to participate in the sweater along and you finish a sweater during the event, you will get a copy of the pattern for free. So um, not only are you entered to win the grand prize, but you automatically get a free, a new free sweater pattern. Um, but you have to actually finish a sweater before September 14th. So make sure you get started soon. Um, so I'm working on that, and I have also made some progress on my new sample for the Jaji pullover. Uh, this you may remember, I originally published as a men's sweater, and now I am revamping the pattern to include additional um, sizes and um, styling for women so that it can be a truly unisex pattern. So I've made some good progress on the body. This is another drop shoulder, and very easy to memorize um, cables on either side. This bit of sort of mock rib, mock rib, whatever you want to call this, <laughs> uh, in the middle. And basically, I'm just knitting, knitting, knitting until I reach the armholes at this point. Um, it's uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I did do a tubular cast on for the bottom hem just because I like how it looks. It is absolutely not essential. Um, 
I was kind of hoping I would get this sample done and photographed in July so I could get that revised pattern out. But I just don't think I'm making quite enough progress to get that done uh, by the end of this month. So maybe in August. Um, the pattern's ready, but I really I want to get I want to get the new sample and the new photos so it's clear how the styling differs for for women and men. So I am plugging away at that, but my primary project right now is a deadline design I'm working on. It is my last one for the foreseeable future. I don't have any other contracts signed or, or deadline projects coming up, um, as far as I know, <laughs> um, but it is a pretty big project and I need to get moving on it. Uh, that is due August 1st. And once that is done, I'm gonna be really focusing on stuff for the fall. So in this episode for UFO Invasion, um, I pulled out a pair of socks <laughs> that I started, I mean, literally years ago. Um, I don't remember what the pattern is called off the top of my head, but I will include it in the show notes. Um, I do know that the yarn is from Vesper Sock Yarn, and this was a, a sort of special edition colorway she did called Thankful. I love it. It's a self-striping. So that's why I picked this pattern, whatever it's called. It's knit um, from the toe up, which is my preferred style. But these have been sitting here for years. And the reason for that is that the pattern is not easy to memorize. And I kept having, because you can see it has this design on the top of the foot and the back is plain. So in order to make that work, um, you you gotta do a whole lot of finagling here. Otherwise this front is gonna keep pulling up, 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 up. Um, so it is sort of a complicated stitch pattern that I haven't, I couldn't memorize at the time. And that's why it's still sitting here. So I love this yarn. And I think it's gonna be really cute. But I might, you know, I just don't have the patience to sit there with a sock pattern that I cannot easily memorize. So, I mean, I'm maybe halfway done just the foot. Um, so as usual for UFO Invasion, I ask you guys to give your opinion. Um, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty well decided on this one. I think I am going to rip it out. And what I'm going to do is use it for a pair of jaywalkers. Uh, jaywalkers were a really popular sock pattern around the time that I started knitting. Um, and I remember this because I had to go on a business trip to Belize in 2009. And while I was there, I was mugged. It's, I get mugged everywhere. Something that happens to me. Um, I'm a frequent victim of crimes. Um, I was mugged and they stole my purse and they took my sock. Um, and I was really mad about it. Um, and ultimately I did knit another pair of jaywalkers, um, but those wore out a long time ago. But the Jaywalker is kind of like this. It's got like a, a chevron pattern, um, but it was much easier to memorize than this is. My problem with the Jaywalker is that they're worked from the cuff down, but that's not the end of the world. So I think chances are I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night on this one, rip this out and use this beautiful, beautiful yarn. Again, I just love this. Um, for a pair of jaywalkers. That's how I'm leaning, but if you have some opinions, I would love to hear about them in the comment box below. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 23 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode or any of the other content here on my YouTube channel, which includes free knitting tutorials and my Knitting Design Studio blog series, uh, I hope that you will subscribe, like, share, all of that good stuff that helps uh, expand the reach of the podcast. 
Um, you can find links to everything that I have talked about in the show notes at mediaperdawana.com slash Elo and Stitch. A uh, special thank you again to my Patreon patrons who help me keep this podcast and Media Peruana Designs up and running. Uh, if you're interested in finding out how you can support the podcast and get access to free patterns and discount codes and behind the scenes and all of that good stuff, you can find more information at patreon.com slash Peruana. If you are looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Media Peruana. And I will see you next time. I didn't mention the Who's dead? Who's dead? A classmate. Back it up.